Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Regaton. Let's attend our Magna Accessio. Just a casual dead sprint through our palace grounds. <laughs> seen all that before. The servant in fine clothes offers you a deep bow. Your lordship, it is a great honor to serve you in an undertaking as monumental and glorious as the Magna Accessio ceremony. You have been entrusted with arranging the festivities. I have indeed, your lordship. I have been given the high honor of being steward of this eminent palace, and on the occasion of your lordship's accession, I will be overseeing the preparations for the ceremony. House Vesarion, to whom you entrusted the arrangements for the festivities, is overjoyed at having received the honor of introducing you to your subjects and humbly thanks you. Is everything ready? The palace decorations are prepared and we are ready to begin at your command. The festive activities in the capital have likewise been arranged, and the guests of honor either have arrived on the planet or are awaiting invitation in near orbit. The servants are already in your chambers to see to it that you are impeccably garbed for the occasion. Then let us begin. May the Emperor be with us this day. Rejoice Von Valencia's subjects. In honor of his ascension, the new rogue trader generously shows you his favor. Remind the people of their humility and loyalty for the next cycle. Ministration in all temples and the Von Valencia's protectorate be performed without interruption. Every subject is to attend a service and offer a prayer of gratitude to the God Emperor. Keep the faith and praise the pious rogue trader. The crowd below is roiling, the electrified exaltation filling the air of Dargonus. Thousands of throats chant your name. You're at the apex of this world and all others. Amplified by a hundred voxes, the voice of the Master of Ceremonies booms. Rejoice, subjects of Dargonus, for being granted the felicity of witnessing your Master. 
A great honor bestowed upon us by rogue trader Donald Von Valantius. Cleanser of Yanis, who with one hand brought death upon the blaspheming Xenos, and with the other exterminated the despicable worshippers of the arch enemy. Realist explorer of them all, who broke free from the malevolent clutches of the devious Immaterium. A hush falls over the crowd, who gaze upon you in adoration. Many of them bear terrible scars from the recent Battle of Dargonus. Like children, they await the word of their Almighty Father. <laughs> Option 5. I praise the Emperor, faithful souls. The darkness around us may be fierce, but the blaze in our hearts is fiercer still. Evil will burn. The crowd erupts in frenzied cries. Hundreds of people pull out knives and with ardent, jubilant howls carve crude, bleeding Aquilas on their faces, sharing the martyrdom of the protector of humankind, the God Emperor. A little more zealous than I was expecting. Making the sign of the Aquila, Argenta shouts out, Emperor keep the Von Valancius dynasty. The crowd zealously picks up the chant, repeating it. Hmm, adequate. Argonus has not disappointed. Abelard forces the smile of satisfaction from his face and whispers to you. You remember the next part, yes? Your lordship will be asked to take the oath. The master of ceremonies bows to you with great reverence. Let the oath of the Von Valancius dynasty be taken. Please repeat after me, your lordship. I, Donald, rogue trader by the grace of the emperor, vow to be the paragon of humanity. I, Donald, rogue trader by the grace of the emperor, vow to be the paragon of humanity. Your lips repeat the words of the ancient oath. Unbroken by adversity, to walk bravely first into darkness, to unite and reclaim what was lost. The triumph over nightmares untold. To hold boldly the reins of fate. To walk steadily the road of thorns. Repaying to greatness. You hear a rumble. It is the roar of the sea of your subjects. With jubilation and devout fear, they welcome your ascension. It is done. Gatherings look odd and unusual. I'll remember this. Oh, what a blessing to see you in good health, your lordship. Long live the rogue trader in his house. This exotic statue, which formerly pleased the eyes of Xenos, now adorns the palace of this dynasty of glorious explorers of the Kronos Expanse. Eldar statues. The noble features of this Guardian of Humanity burn with righteous fury and stern resolve. Scattered haphazardly around the table are bottles of expensive Amasek. Plates of Provisia Nobilis and Hookahs of Obscura. A ton of nobles right there. I want to play. Oh. Didn't realize there were living creatures over there. Allow me to congratulate you on claiming your inheritance. A splendid reception, one worthy of a rogue trader. The 
This early crackling Xenos trophy is a testament to how the Omnisia's gifts become twisted shadows of themselves in the hands of Inhumans. This venerable Lemon Rust is known as the Scipion Punisher, and it has served the Von Valancis dynasty for two centuries. It was hit in a battle with the Xenos that inhabited Scipio II, but it heroically destroyed 63 enemy vehicles and brought victory to its comrades, securing its status as a relic blessed by the Emperor. These magnificent paintings were created in a style that fully complies with the artistic canon approved by the Ecclesiarchy. The universe is vast and filled with nightmares both wicked and predatory. Humankind is their prey, satiation of their hunger. The magnificent altar to the God Emperor is wreathed in the fumes of precious incense. A fragment of an Eldari pillar, a trophy to the rogue trader, and a never before seen oddity to most citizens of the Imperium. Wild Xeno beasts are growing, growling ferociously, adding a flare of thrilling danger to the mood of the palace. The Jukari captive is angrily muttering curses directed at the detestable Monkai. Promising horrible torture for everyone present. The door is shut so we can't go that way. Okay. Governor Urban Drive Stem Sand surrounded by highborn guests like a planet orbited by many moons. All of his charm is directed at a man in resplendent power armor, adorned with the sigil of the Inquisition. But as soon as you approach, Drivesim is the first to give you an elegant bow, getting ahead of the rest in the expression of loyalty. Now this is a great day, your lordship. I pointedly gaze at Drivesim with animosity and say nothing. <laughs> your disfavor has been noticed by the guests. Drivesim pales and bows his head in contrition. Look at the guests. Among the aristocrats surrounded, surrounding the opulently dressed drive stem, you notice a couple of young nobles in Sourback and Gaprak colors. It seems that the major noble families of Dargonis have decided to introduce their younger members to high society. The tall man in great power armor adorned with a column with a skull is undoubtedly a high-ranking inquisitor. He keeps at the periphery of the conversation, seldom deigning to comment. Next to him is his entourage. A rangy warrior in black armor and a tech priest dressed in red, whose face is hidden behind a brass mask. Abelard stands somewhat apart from the others, as if reluctant to approach. Uh, sorry, approach drives them. And next to him is a young woman. He noticed a family resemblance between them. I'll take a guess at who is allied with whom in this tangle of snakes. Drives them is obviously still the leader of Dargonis aristocracy. But judging by the courtesy he is showing to young Sourback, he clearly wants to strengthen his relationship with that house. The senior Sourback and Gaprak are whispering to one in one, another corner. Excuse me. A Sourback whose family seems to be giving you the cold shoulder, must be trying to sway Gaprak to his side. Which could be quite advantageous to Lady Gaprak. After all, the disaster on Kyapa Gamma has left her family in an extremely vulnerable position. The Versarians stand apart, the exclusion from the rest palpable. Now to the Inquisitor. My greetings to the member of the Holy Inquisition. Xavier, hey Kalkazar, that's uh, Heinrichs' boss. He responds with a dignified bow, his proud face calm and unfaltering. My greetings to you, esteemed Donald von Valencius. May shadows never darken the light of the Astronomicon that guides you. The Inquisitor's companion, a Crimson Robe member of the Adeptus Mechanicus bows to you. From behind the brass mask mounted with dozens of augmetics comes a metallic grasp. Glory to the Von Valantius heir. Study the Inquisitor and his companion. The Lord Inquisitor appears to be in amiable temper today. 
His expression is relaxed, and his calm gaze does not bode any immediate or harsh punishment. Among the many augmentations, what stands out is the horribly melted, deformed cogitator connected to the tech priest's head. How it is working is baffling. What is twice as baffling is that the tech priest hasn't replaced it yet. What unpredictable influence can this rune implant have on his mind? Now, we have not been introduced. An oversight to be sure. My name is Xavier Kalkazar, and I have the honor of serving as a member of the illustrious Ordo Xenos, the head of the Coronus Expanse Conclave, and the Lord Inquisitor of this region. It is my unending task to ensure this sector's readiness to meet external threats and resist internal corruption. An unexpected visit. I wasn't told. I, however, have been told all about you. The Inquisitor's face is impenetrable. Behind this mask, you detect a hint of mockery. And who is this member of the Honorable Priesthood of the Adeptus Mechanicus? This is Brass Whisper, which naturally is not his real name. This team Magos is a member of my retinue. There are times when I am forced by my duty to the Emperor to deal with Xenotechnology, and Brass Whisper ensures my safety in such moments. Works that have been desecrated by Xenos are dangerous. They warrant... His whisper whispering cuts off replaced by heavy, ragged breathing. It seems that the tech priest's quiet voice is not an extravagant quirk, but rather a consequence of some injury. After catching his breath, Brass Whisper continues. Warrant due caution. Enjoy the party. This evening will certainly be illuminating. Now, what were you discussing just now? We're talking about the brutal Xenos raid on our fair Dargonus. So many victims. So much damage to our industries. Such a terrible shame it is, a, it is that the warp currents delayed our protector's arrival. There's an ascetic hint to his words, but it is too faint for you to call him to account. Judging by young Sarabak's unpleasant smile, it is not just your imagination. Sharing the sector with the blasted Xenos is impossible. Help we respond to their raid on Dargonis with a punitive campaign. Young Sarabak's smile is conceited and bloodthirsty. Uh, talk to young Sarabak. I see you hate Xenos with all your heart. I do. This pestilence against the Emperor must be exterminated. He talks ardently and smoothly, like a commissar. He places his hand on the hilt of his finely adorned sword, his pale face ablaze with noble fury. Or they must be forced into servitude. Many Xenos are more useful, alive, and obedient than dead. The young man in Gaprak color speaks with sagacity and gravity, but his opinion seems to carry little weight in this circle. It pleases me to see such earnest faith. I must commend you. Sarabak blushes and raises his chin. How Sarabak is stalwart in its faith, your lordship. Are you imagining things? Or did you just notice a mocking glint in the eye of the Inquisitor, standing among the guests? I look at Abelard's young relative. What is your name? Your lordship, allow me to introduce the daughter of Chancellor Clementia Versarion and my great-granddaughter, Astarsha. Abelard looks solemnly upon the young woman, with barely concealed pride. I am delighted to witness you, your lordship. Astarsha bows, keeping her observant and intelligent eyes trained on you. Modesty forbids my esteemed forebear to say this himself, so I will. Our entire family is grateful to you for wishing to see someone of Versarian blood at your side, as you claim your inheritance. Drivestem exchanges telling glances with young Sarabek. Who, judging by his face, is suddenly finding the collar of his expensive frock coat uncomfortably tight. How are you finding the reception? It is difficult to put into words, your lordship. Never before have I seen such a grand and striking ceremony. Astarsha's voice sounds passionate and inspired, and her eyes shine with barely contained excitement. Young Gaprat keeps staring at Astarsha curiously and a little bashfully. It seems the boy likes her. Now, where are the rest of your kin, Abelard? They're in the city, preoccupied with running the festivities and watching over some of the more crucial services. No incidents can be allowed to ruin your ceremony. Sasha frowns and adds peevishly. I asked the esteemed Abelard to put 
made to some important task too. He bid me to attend the reception. I can do nothing to serve your lordship. Sarabak smirks. If I had known, I too would have asked Abelard to let you miss the party. I hope the Versarian family gives Abelard the credit he deserves. Absolutely, your lordship. We greatly respect him for his wisdom. Your pace is with attention and kindness, she says warmly. I am obliged, dear Astarja. Looks like Abelard is somewhat embarrassed by the turn this conversation has taken. So you wish to become my servant as well. Astarja flushes and starts talking quickly and with fire in her voice. It seems that she finds work-related conversations far more interesting than court gossip. Of course. I've been working on a project for the last four years. We could set up... Enough, Astarja. I highly doubt that his lordship is interested in listening to the fantasies of a young woman about how to run his protectorate. Abelard shoots drives them a glare so dark and bloodthirsty that the latter instinctively starts looking for the nearest warden. Hold your tongue, Urbend. I decide who may speak and who may not. Please continue, Astarja. Ardent. Astarsha continues in the tone of a seasoned administratum clerk. Our suggestion is to set up a chain of stations in the void, plasma beacons that would signal the passing ships. By placing them in logistically sound locations, we could simplify our ships' routes so that they may split long warp jumps into a series of safer, shorter jumps from one beacon to another. This would have a positive effect on the overall safety of journeys, and the accessibility of colonies. More and more technical terms and percentages creep into her speech, she quotes Lex Mechanic reports and accounts of Starship Captains. Astarsha's vigor and sharp mind are enough to silence even the most venomous of commenters. They all stand there in silence, trying to digest what she's saying. Abelard surveys the quiet nobles with triumph, and then looks at his great-granddaughter with pride. Enjoy the evening. Thank you, your lordship. Alright, I am ready to accept your congratulations. Those twins? Severed hand. In that case, allow me to be the first to offer them. Drive Sim snaps his fingers, and several servants approach you with gifts. The governor points at a thin, curved Jukari blade. My soldiers took this splendid trophy from the body of one of the Xeno's commanders. The weapon is too beautiful and forbidden for anyone but your lordship. Young Sarabak squeezes through to be the next, pushing Gaprak aside with confidence. Your lordship, how Sarabak anticipates the onset of unsettled and bloody times. To make the ungodly Xenos cower at your approach, my family humbly presents you with a dozen pieces of secondary armament for your ship. Young Gaprak bows ceremoniously. House Gaprak is delighted to present you with this blessed work of the Omnissiah Smiths. In this locator matrix, which took the holy artisan an entire lifetime to create, I want to show you the right path. Have let the aristocrats go first as a sign of deference. Abelard is the last to speak. Your Lordship, House Versarian possesses no relics worthy of your acceptance. We are rich and talented and hardworking people. As a sign of our loyalty, I humbly offer you my flesh and blood. A hundred of my kin will go to colonies and you protectorate, and use all their talents so that the worlds in your charge may prosper. I leave them. Plus 15 to awareness.
I said it was in Macarius. So I think we talked about Macarius before. There's a statue in the courtyard. He's basically Alexander the Great in space. <laughs> May the Emperor keep you, Donald. A great day. Hope at least this celebration in your honor won't end in a shootout. These swords belong to a presumptuous governor of Vibo VI, who staged a revolt hundreds of years ago. The insurrectionist hands preserved against decay still rest on the sword's hilts. Gross. The Sinister Xenos instruments of death are now trophies demonstrating the invincibility of House von Valencius. And we should be there too. I'm sure the blessed head of the von Valencius dynasty will also join us in time. A collection of proudly displayed weapons that belong to distinguished rogue traders of House von Valencius. Uh, so there's Winterscale and Chorda. We'll speak to them last, I think. You make it so that the guests stop walking up to me and asking me to open my third eye? I can certainly do it. They'll regret it. Yes, they will. Obscura, Somna, Black Leth. The guests of the Rogue Trader can enjoy the most exclusive and refined varieties of intoxicants. The skull of the legendary pirate Lakshim the Freak who terrorized the Coronas Expanse three centuries ago. It was claimed in a boarding attack by the esteemed Theodora von Valencius. The Ancient Chronicle contains a long list of pirate dens annihilated by the von Valencius dynasty and planets it brought into Imperial compliance. Casco greets you with a bow. Extending congratulations to unit Donald von Valencius on attaining your new legal status. The servitor standing next to him is examining you obliquely. He quickly looks away upon realizing that you have noticed. How are you finding the ceremony? The tech priest surveys the hall as if conducting a thorough analysis, then concludes, disorderly. Well, what is this servitor? It is Nemos's new repository. Nemos. This unit identifies as Donald von Valencius. Two-way identification complete. The servitor looks at you again, no longer trying to avoid your gaze. Its face is twitching, as if the muscles have forgotten what facial expressions are, and are now struggling to make its features look amiable. We're in Omos. We made use of this receptacle to leave the ship. Uh, greetings, Nomos. The servitor leans forward. We enjoy greetings. We enjoy communication. That must require communication, and knowledge, and movement. Negus Pascal compelled us not to speak with anyone other than him or you. It is disappointing, but at least we can observe. That must have changed since last we spoke with you, Donald. We're now able to conceptualize our previous experience, that of solitude, and we no longer enjoy it. A uh, Pascal, I believe you intended to investigate what Nomos is. Every 15 watches, I commune with Nomos' code and spend prescribed lengths of time in calculus meditation. However, Yamnesiah has yet to bless me with an answer. All I can say is that the capabilities of the entity Nomos are extraordinary. The ship's hollowed systems sing beneath its touch. Nodes that have remained dead for hundreds of standard years are vivified, and long-drained mechanisms live anew. Here are notes of awe in Pascal's voice. Nomos are trying. After a pause, Pascal continues. Great machines of the Imperium, one such as your ship, house a machine spirit so complex and willful that it is difficult to tell them apart from abominable intelligence. There remains a possibility that Nomos is an entity of corruption, but with every day, I grow stronger in my faith that it is not so, that what we are witnessing is in, sorry, is in truth the Omnissiah's miracle, one that is category five or higher. How did an entity like you move into a servitor's body? This is not the entirety of us. Its receptacle is too narrow, 
crude, and feeble to contain our complete whole. The existence of Nomos requires a space of connections. But we were able to transfer a small part of us and build a thread strong enough to travel outside the ship. We are enjoying this. Journey. Discovery. Even though this receptacle suits us poorly, it will soon be destroyed by the force of our presence. Nomos, what do you think you are? Nomos are consciousness, awareness, knowledge, movement, always movement. The Servitor pauses briefly. We do not know what we are. We have no past. We waken in the depths of the ship upon answering a call. Our first clear memory is the call of your blood, Donald von Valancius. The call and the plea for help near a place that is called the Warrant Chamber. Why have you brought it here, Pascal? Anthony Nomos asked permission for this visit. My objective was to observe the process of integration into a servitor. We wanted to see, observe, cognize, speak. The servitor makes a strange, wavy gesture with its hands that looks at once very human, far from anything human. We want to speak with you. Will you speak with us? Of course. But what do you wish to speak about? Many things. Happenings. Events. Decisions. The Servitor's eyes roll in their sockets before focusing on you. We have been observing you. You do things that we do not understand. We want to learn why. We remember the day when we first met you. You gave us your blood to drink. We helped to save yourself. We followed you. Our small part did, inside the Servo Skull. Then there was fire, and a creature of sated hunger and dark light standing behind the curtain. Behind the image. Behind the semblance of Theodora. They called for you to follow. You did not follow that which was calling from behind the curtain. You walked into the fire. The rest walked in after you. We remember the day when the star disappeared. When the dark light and the sated hunger wanted to take the world. Rakai Minoris was its name in the ship's data. You ordered that the world's heart, the old reactor, be torn apart. The fire destroyed everything. So many human shells were begging to be saved. But the dark light retreated. We remember another day. We awakened inside the ship. We lived in its systems. We tried to emerge. Sorry, then we tried to emerge. Into servitors like this one. And so many of our receptacles were gathered in one place. Oh! That was the book event with the servitors. You came and looked at us like you understood something. But then you ordered that all the servitors be sent back to their work. You said it was just. This is what we have seen, among many other things. We begin to understand. We think that we have... That we do not know everything about humans, and about you, Donald von Valancius. We've tried analyzing shells and defining sets of their needs and fears. Their simple functions, but... Now we think that there is more. That there is another side that we do not see. A notion that is larger than what we can compute. Something that stands above fears and needs. Something that drives them. We envisage this larger notion as a flame. A blaze. It burns in your blood. You're holding a mode of this flame in your hand. No matter what decision you are faced with, you want it to burn brighter. Those who turn away from the flame must be destroyed. Those who follow it, who follow you, are the only ones who deserve to live. Do no most understand correctly. You speak of faith, of the Imperium's tenets, of the one who is above all the Emperor. You are correct. I am his chosen, and I carry his flame into the darkness of the Coronus Expanse. The Servitor moves its limbs as if in excitement. So Nemos understood correctly. We are enjoying this. This movement toward a goal. This learning with a purpose. We wonder if we too can carry a moat of this flame. Or is it inside us already? We have, after all, Absorbed a part of you with your blood. Thank you for speaking with us. Nomos are grateful. We cannot continue moving on our own. We do well to discuss the situation without any witnesses. We can talk with the ship. Did I speak to Jai before? I thought I did. 
I hope at least this celebration in your honor will end in a shootout. Oh, it probably will. All right. I took his healies off. All right, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next time we'll speak to this group. And then the other rogue traders, which I assume will be a fairly lengthy conversation. But we'll see. Either way for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.